I'm delighted today to be joined by Tom White, who is the founder of the IoT podcast, the IoT job site, Paratus People and Private Tech Investor. Hi, Tom. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks, Joe. Nice to be here. Sounds like I do an awful lot, doesn't it? But uh, thank you very much for the warm intro. <laughs> Maybe you could start by just telling us a little bit about yourself. So I've been involved in technology uh, for many years now, and I think it stemmed from my time at university. And I kind of got to the point where uh, I didn't want to write code anymore, but I wanted to be involved in the industry. And through that, I kind of found myself getting into recruitment and consulting, um, primarily at the time for the pay TV industry. And then after a while, got into IoT and, and kind of live and breathe IoT at the moment and have done for five years. So Interesting. running the podcast, but yeah, con connecting people um, in the IoT space. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. I think, I think predominantly for me, having spent so much time working with people around entertainment and the display of video and moving images, it's just TV, it's just films, it's just entertainment. IoT has the capability to change the world and enrich people's lives. The ability to connect systems and objects and environments to the internet to harvest data, to interpret that data for good, um, is, is truly something special. I think the emergence of some of the things that we're doing in digital twins, you know, being able to replicate real life situations in a virtual context is going to provide us with a lot more understanding of how we roll out potential, you know, critical infrastructure, both within smart cities and other environments. And, and I think this kind of segue into Web3 and the metaverse is really interesting and, and just where we're going to end up. I don't think we can ever overlook security without IoT security and secure by design principles. We're opening ourselves up to, to massive attacks in the future. The, the, those two things for me, digital twins and security are some of the hottest things I'm interested in. Uh, but from a selfish sense as well, I'm, I'm big in smart homes and home automation and where we can go with that from literally, you know, waking up in the morning to, you know, checking your connected fridge to see if you need to go out and buy some milk. And, yeah. you know, I think, I think it's going to be an interesting journey and, and, you know, something that I'm just quite interested in at heart. I think I'm a geek basically, Joe, I think that's what it is, right? <laughs> So I think there's a couple of people that have turned friends of mine, um, Rob Tiffany, um, mm. really famous around digital twins. Some of his work's been pioneering. And I think when you look at the, the basis of networking, uh, Kez links from Corvo, Kez was on my podcast. For me, the, the thought leaders are the guys that were at the coal face developing this early, early doors that had the vision and they're at, they were right here before, you know, people jumped on the bandwagon. I think for yeah. me is really important. Just and, and I'd say the last person I've mentioned is, is probably Klaus Schwab, right? You know, so his book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, uh, opened my eyes um, the possibilities that we have around smart manufacturing, IoT, uh, you know, graphics, AR, this this whole immersive tech movement. Standardization. So there's a lot of different players there's a lot of different ways to enter this market without a kind of common platform it's difficult for people to build on other ones are the demystification i think you know and i think we're kind of victims of our own success in the fact that we want to attribute everything to a name or to a badge where it's really a connected device and i think that's one of the biggest challenges that brands face is actually getting the clear message out there to people who aren't in the industry to understand the benefit to them and the benefit mm -hmm. to their customer. So I think there needs to be a concerted effort together to ensure that we can simplify the, the tech buzz around it so that people understand it a little bit more. Um, but coming back to security, as I mentioned, you know, an area that I'm interested in, you know, security is still an afterthought because you can't just create stuff and then try and do the security afterwards. And it, and it just opens yourself up to hackers, ex exploitation of networks, um, 
and and the problem that you've got, Joe, is as soon as someone is a victim of this, they're going to tell six people, and they'll tell six people, and then people won't buy it. These these major things are are the problems that we face. I think there's some big players involved in digital twins that are doing good work. Bentley Systems, Siemens, you know, Matterport. And then you've got startups involved in different ends of the IoT spectrum, maybe working around the edge and machine learning. Edge Impulse, for instance, I know the guys there have recently just taken on Simon Seeger's ex-CEO of ARM to join the board. When it comes to IoT, there's so many different facets of IoT from embedded machine learning, security, automation, that there's lots of startups and lots of people with great ideas. And I think some of them need access to funding. They need access to people who understand what they do to be able to plug the gaps that they may have, either resource-wise, money-wise, PR, etc. IoT can affect any business. You don't have to be an IoT business to be in IoT. And I think that there's a lot of use cases in smart manufacturing of businesses that have decided to um, implement IoT services, which I think can transcend across other markets. And I think that's going to be the exciting time for when people can see the benefit of, of picking up, you know, millions and millions of points of data on what they can do with that. Um, it needs to be an anchor for good. You know, you talk about tech for good at the start, you know, tech for good is mm-hmm. fantastic, but it's got to actually be tech for good and not greenwash, right? Um, but I think those are the brands and the future brands that are going to do something special. And, and it may not be who we think it's going to be. So I'm excited to see who those companies are. To be honest, I'm quite a foodie. I like to cook. Um, I'm off to Paris this weekend. Uh, first time I'm leaving the country in, uh, <laughs> oh, wow, since January 2020. So I'm off to a couple of nice, nice. restaurants there. Um, big into mountain biking uh, and a big love for cars as well. Um, but it's, it's, you know, that stems back into, into my professional life because of the advancement in EV tech and, and everything that's happening there, right? I, I, think, yeah. I think it's going to be a sad day when the, internal combustion engine ceases to be and you won't be able to buy any petrol anymore but the also the right day from a social ecological point of view as well uh, what would you say are the, some key projects or content or things that you're working on in the next 12 months that maybe we could help promote you with i think for me dni is a big thing katie who uh spearheads a lot of our research and, and it really is the kind of you know the brains behind the iot podcast um, we've worked together to set up a Women in IoT conference. So I think for us, it's moving some of the virtual events that we've had and the podcast and bringing that into real life because we've all been, for one of the better words, locked up for the last couple of years. So if we can actually start meeting people and networking again, it would be nice to do that, but but promote what we need to promote. And I think d and in the IoT industry is something that's, again, been undernourished. So and we hope to make a small dent on that, right? For me, I like to understand problems and try and find a solution to that problem. So if a brand wanted to contact me, it's usually because they would have resourcing challenges and we would help them on on that side through our engineering services division. Or it might be that they don't really know if IoT would work for them. And for that, I'd be able to have a conversation and kind of understand the use cases and maybe put them in touch with some more qualified people than me. But I think it's about understanding the situation that the business is in and seeing where we can help them across the spectrum. So investment, recruitment, training, uh, consultancy, uh, PR, media. Me on LinkedIn, I'm on it constantly. Uh, I normally get back to you pretty quickly. Uh, that's the end of uh, uh, the time we've got for today. So uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today, Tom. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Joe. Cheers now.